feeling he's just letting everybody down all the time. He never really just doing anything right. <laughs> It, I just, it's, I'm sure everybody feels that way. Just always no. feel like you're just not. I never thought I was going to get divorced. I didn't want to get divorced. I didn't want to be a divorced person. I really didn't want to be uh, a split family with my children. And it upset me because it meant I wasn't who I thought I was. And that was so painful. The shocking reason behind Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez's split has been revealed, and you won't believe the fact that Diddy is somehow involved again. Apparently, it has to do with a sex tape between JLO and Diddy being found, and, you know, that should come as no surprise to anyone considering Diddy had a habit of recording whatever went on in his house. He's speaking on it right now. He'll be one of the first dudes that they will probably pull to the side and say, yo, well, you say that... Your man, I heard you on TMZ say that he never did this and he never did that, but um, ain't this you? If those pictures or those films or anything like that exists, you know what I'm saying? That's what they, they pay those agents to do. So, of course, I don't believe that none of the people who or his celebrity friends is going to speak or say nothing until they're either contacted or they know what they really got. So you feel like they might be worried that they might be on tape at one of Diddy parties doing something they wasn't supposed to be doing? The Rob said in his affidavit that Diddy had every room taped and bugged. The two were seemingly involved in a romantic relationship in the 90s and early 2000s for a while, and there's a whole host of interviews involving them. Life, but at first, I, I didn't like him at all. You know, I didn't. I thought he was like, you know, ick. I didn't like him because, you know, I, Sean and I were very different that way. You know, I was very, like, family-oriented and a, kind of a, you know... The married, you know, I was actually, when we first worked together on the video, I was married, even though I was going through problems, nobody knew that, you know what I mean? And I, you know, I wanted my family, and even though at that time it was not going well, you know what I mean? That was who I was. That's how I was raised. The two kept in touch over the next few years, and when Jennifer left her marriage, they became much more than just friends. Once I got to know him, and, you know, we became friends first, and then, um... We, we developed this bond. We both understood where we were at that time in our lives. And we both knew nobody else understood exactly how we felt. Um, so sitting there, being handcuffed to a bench, and, you know, I do remember feeling the comfort of someone caring about you enough that, you know, they just wanted to make it okay and couldn't believe that we were in this situation. And how did this happen? It started to happen. I started looking into her eyes, more spending some more time with her. And I just fell in love with her. To have somebody who, by your side, who understands what you're going through, when at the end of the day, doesn't need anything from you except to love you. She was one of the nicest, most beautiful people. Things, though, went a little sideways for the both of them in the Lil Rod lawsuit. Jones claimed that Diddy was violent, threatened to eat his face, flashed guns, and frequently bragged about bribing witnesses and jurors in the criminal case concerning the 1999-999-C nightclub shooting with Shine. Jones's lawsuit also brought up Jennifer Lopez, who dated Diddy for two years until 2001. It refers to the 1999 incident when the couple was arrested after leaving a New York nightclub following a shooting. Although Lopez's charges were quickly dropped, Combs was acquitted while his protege, rapper Shine, was convicted. According to the lawsuit, Jones alleges that Combs confessed to being responsible for the shooting and claimed that Lopez had carried the gun he used into the club that night. Despite the way history was written, one of the victims of the shooting, Natana Rubin, claimed that it was Diddy who shot. Hey, how you doing? So, hmm, here today about this latest lawsuit with the P. Diddy, Puff Daddy, Puffy, Sean Puffy Combs, whatever you want to call them. Lawsuit that has come out involving the producer Little Rod. So basically his last two lawsuits, or last two major lawsuits, um, the one with Cassie, she made mention that Puffy made her carry his guns into nightclubs and wherever they went. 
and he threatened her to make her feel like she had to do so. And of while there were lots of things of importance, that stood out to me, and I'm going to tell you why. In this lawsuit with the producer Little Rod, they were both essayed by him and threatened and physically harmed. But in this lawsuit, he appears to be a very young producer to me. But he said something very specific. As a means of threatening him, Puffy said, that's why I shot up the club in New York back in 1999 and let Shine take the fall for it. Let me tell you why that's of utmost importance to me. Because I am the woman who he shot in the face in that 1999, December 27th, 1999, Club New York shooting. I have told everyone ad nauseum since then, even the surgeon who did the surgery to take the bullet, I got shot in my face with a nine millimeter, excuse me, nine millimeter hollow point bullet called a cop killer. I literally have told everyone and never changed what I said. I watched him. I got pow pow in the face. I watched him fire the gun. I've said it all this time. Even the surgeon who did my surgery to take out part of the bullet fragments that was aspirating into my lungs and try to remove as many bullet fragments as possible, testified in the criminal trial that while they were putting me under, I was screaming, Puffy, pew, pew, me in the face. He testified in the criminal trial. It is in the record. They all knew he did it. Everybody knew he did it. But he paid off the club bouncer named Sharice and all these other people and the club owners with their video to hide the video. That's his MO. I told everybody that. This man almost took my life, has traumatized my life, has caused undue harm, irreparable damage to my life, lied his behind off. I've had all these youngins on the internet harassing me, swearing that I'm making it up that he did it. And look what he did to little Rod. Unsurprisingly enough, JLo's mom actually warned her about the type of person Diddy was. According to Jean Deal, she did not want her daughter to date Sean Combs. And we know Diddy's the vengeful type, so it won't surprise you to know he did not react very well to breaking up with Jen and then her eventual relationship with Ben Affleck. And you said JLo mom didn't like Puffy, though, right? She just, his mom couldn't stand. His mom never took a present, a gift. If 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 she, if if she needed Adam breathe, she wouldn't take his last breath. Puff Daddy, man, big big fan here. Yeah. Uh, my question to you is, uh, once and for all, clear it up for us. Is J Lo's ass the best in the business? Uh, Definitely the best in the business. And did yeah. she have to leave you because you cheated on her? That's nah. what we heard. You cheated. Yeah, I mean I did. <laughs> That's what you told her anyway, right? <laughs> no, I didn't cheat. Let me tell you something about J Lo. Yeah. Can you believe? <laughs> How much attention this relationship of hers is getting. It's ridiculous. With Ben Affleck. And you know what's sad? It's going to end in a divorce just like the other two marriages. You know it and I know it. This girl gets married every year. In fact, she had a longer relationship with you than she had with any of her husbands. Yeah. Comment on that. <laughs> Comment. What do you think, P. Diddy? Is it a great ass or what? Comment on everything that's just been said. Yeah, I told you before it was a great ass. Yeah, we know it's, it's a great ass. She is a great ass. You hit that ass for a long time. I mean, that, that's in the past. You know, it's somebody else's. Anyway, <laughs> anyway that, that, that's the way it that's goes. Past that. Anyway, I think, Ben Affleck. I, mean, I, I like I like Ben. I mean, I like you do? Ben. I like the Ben and Jen thing. I mean, it's all good. Anyway, I mean, Ben Affleck, you know, can give like it to her as good as you did, any way possible. No, I mean, I don't know, man. I mean, you're good at it. I mean, you I know what you're doing. I'm not really looking at what nobody else is doing. I mean, that my my thing was in the past, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm living in another you know, another time world, zone. Another now. time zone right now. You glad know? to be rid of her. I mean, it's it's not even it's not even like that. I'm happy to be in a relationship that I'm in. You know Nothing better than fresh new. Chris, you're on the air. Puffy, how you doing? What's hey. poppin', baby? Bad boy to the soundtrack and story. Huh? What? Huh? It's Jay Rochelle down there. 
Is J Lo shaved down there? That's a good question. That's a legitimate know. question. Yeah, that's non racial. That's non racial. I don't remember. All right. I don't remember. <laughs> So now on this Bad Boy soundtrack. Hey, attention everyone, attention everyone. Don't ask me no more to J Lo questions. It's been beautiful over the last. And if Gene Deal's allegations are anything to go by, it seems that Jennifer Lopez was very much attractive to many celebrities in Hollywood, including Jada and Will Smith. Tell me the story about how Puffy wanted to fight Will Smith over Jennifer Lopez. Oh man. Um. We were at a birthday party that I think either Matt Damien was given for Ben Affleck. It was just a little gathering. It was at the Four Seasons. Will Smith and his sister and her husband, we were all sitting on this side of the room. Matt Damien, uh, Ben Affleck, Jennifer Lopez, Puff, Will Smith, and uh, Jada and it was sitting on the other side of the room. So I know Puff so well that he stood up. When he stood up, he walked and like, and did his own some, some kind of way like, and then he went like this, you know, like that I went over towards him. I know to go over there towards him. So I go over towards him and he said to me, he said, yo, I think Will and Jada is trying to scoop up Jennifer. I want you to stay close because I'm going to snuff them. So it's clear that J-Lo has quite a history with Diddy, but where did it all start going wrong with Ben Affleck? Page Six reported that trouble started way back during their honeymoon, where the couple was constantly hounded by photographers in Lake Como, Italy. The source went on to say they would barely speak to each other during what was supposed to be the happiest time of their life. He sold her on him being a changed man, and that lasted a very short time. The New York Post also revisited the greatest love story never told. The documentary accompanying Lopez's film This Is Me Now. In the documentary, Lopez reflected on Affleck's discomfort with some of her artistic choices. At another point in the documentary, Affleck is shown reacting to Lopez sharing his private love letters with her music team. Last week, TMZ reported that Lopez had filed for divorce without a lawyer, the New York Post later noted that Lopez cited irreconcilable differences as the reason for the split. According to TMZ, the couple had been working toward a settlement for months, but discussions became acrimonious and they still haven't reached an agreement. A source told People that Lopez was done waiting and decided to file on the second anniversary of their Georgia wedding ceremony. She tried really hard to make things work and is heartbroken. The source added, Within 24 hours of Jen's filing, the film has seen a 3,000% spike in streams. Jane! And this conversation with her monster-in-law co-star Jane Fonda has gone viral. This is my concern. Like, it feels too much like you're trying to prove something instead of just living it. And I real, I thought I told you. When Jen and I broke up before, the catalyst for that was this massive amount of scrutiny around our private life. In a rare critique, a source told the Daily Mail that Lopez's friends believe she needs to do some self-reflection after four failed marriages. Her friends feel that she should take a look inside and focus on herself instead of what others want her to be and finally figure out who she is and what she wants from her future. They said since then, many people have come out to say that Jennifer Lopez isn't actually the angel she pretends to be. Most well, J Lo can't catch a break right now, and I already know that this woman is probably at home losing her sh everybody is over here stitching that one video you know the one of her 16 in the bronx with her crazy hair and then ham and cheese on a roll with an orange drink if you know you know we don't know and a small bag of chips well while everybody's on here hopping on the j-lo hey train it looks like a lot of things are resurfacing about j-lo specifically this one interview that she did where people are just saying that it solidifies the fact that j-lo is completely delulu now this is where people got that interview in question from this is what she actually said during the interview now that Lopez has edged up to what she calls the bottom of the A-list of actresses, how does she view the women whom she's been in contention for roles, like, say, Salma Hayek? And J-Lo says, we're in two different realms. She's a sex bombshell, and those are the kinds of roles she does. I do all kinds of different things. It makes me laugh when she says she got offered Selena, which was an outright lie.
if that's what she does to get herself publicity, then that's her thing. Columbia offered me the choice of Fool's Russian or Anaconda, but I chose the fun B movie because the full script wasn't strong enough. Girl, the delusion. And it gets worse. They ask her about Cameron Diaz. A lucky model who's been giving a lot of opportunities. I just wish she would have done more with it. She's beautiful and has a great presence though. And in my best friend's wedding, I thought when directed, she can be good. Then ask about Gwyneth Paltrow. Tell me what she's been in. I swear to God, I don't remember anything she was in. Some people get hot by association. I heard more about her and Brad Pitt than I ever heard about her work. Now, mind you, Gwyneth Paltrow had just won an Oscar for Shakespeare in Love, and this woman is over here. What? There's absolutely zero chance in hell that Ben Affleck, Academy Award winner, Ben Affleck, I believe, was it for Best Original Screenplay? Read this script and thought that this was a good idea. However, she has that confidence to convince him to either keep his mouth shut or convinced him that this actually was a very good script and it was going to be amazing. And it is like, I mean, I am speechless. I am absolutely speechless about how this woman accomplished this film for how horrible it is. It is like, it is, we should, I'm proud of her. I am just so confused how someone can be that girl in the 2000s. Like if you're my age, a millennial, you know that she was that it girl. And now we're here. But her confidence has never wavered. And we all, I think, need to take note of that. Oh my God. I was skeptical at first because the original source was page six, but today People is confirming their report that Ben Affleck is seeing Kick Kennedy, the daughter of RFK Jr. And there is so much to discuss. Clearly, People Magazine, who is very reputable, is talking to folks in Ben's camp and in Jennifer's camp, and they're hearing conflicting reports. But multiple sources tell People that Ben Affleck and 36-year-old actress Kick Kennedy are hanging out, and she's got a reputation. Kick Kennedy, according to People Magazine, is known as a partier. And she likes to, quote, have a good time. So much so that her ex-boyfriend, he died um, on his way to rehab. You can Google it. Matthew Mellon. Here's where it gets real nasty. According to People Magazine, Ben and Kick have been spending time together since late spring. That means while he was still with Jennifer Lopez. Waking up in the morning, thinking about so many things. I just wish things would get better. I'm trying to get rid of them. But nothing seems to be why did you unmatch me? It's me. They're always dressed to impress. MTV couldn't get enough of them. Remember TRL? Anywhere they went paparazzi followed. This was a different time. Everyone wanted to know what they were going to wear. Buffy's white party loved up and everyone was like, OMG, they're so cute. Then December 1999, they go to a party in New York. There are pew pews involved. They both get arrested. Later, JLo was off the hook. I vividly remember people were like, goodness gracious, poor JLo. She's with a bad boy. They should break up. But they didn't. They went to the Grammys together. She wore this Versace gown. Everyone lost their minds. They coordinated wearing matching white outfits at the MTV Video Music Awards. Then it came all crashing down. Valentine's Day 2001, they announced they broke up. Seven months later, she married Chris Judd. And then they divorced after nine months. Diddy and Kim Porter reconciled. Although maybe they were seeing each other in between. And 
who knows who else he was seeing. After Jennifer Lopez was dragged into the Diddy lawsuit over allegedly being the gun mule in a 1999 nightclub shooting where Diddy and J-Lo allegedly made a rapper named Shine take the fall and spend 10 years in prison for them, people have started digging into her past and it raises some questions. J-Lo recently spent $20 million on a film project that was supposed to help her reputation and make her seem more likable, but it backfired. In one scene, she tries to paint herself out to be some sort of rags to riches story where she was a young girl running up and down the block with messy hair but her classmates exposed her for going to an all girls private christian school that was in a mansion whose tuition was twelve thousand dollars a year and she had hair like this so who knows what else she's lying about you feel about this so this lady right here above me is very popular celebrity jennifer lopez and she's currently getting a lot of hate on social media after she was seen spitting her gum out into her assistant's hand now Jennifer Lopez was filming a movie right here but a lot of people still feel like this is very rude and nasty behavior and she should not be treating her employees like that. Megan McCain is adding on to the J-Lo hate train by saying that Jennifer Lopez was deeply unpleasant when she met her on The View. Megan talked about it on the latest episode of her podcast, Citizen McCain. It's interesting because Megan starts by saying that she feels J-Lo is getting bullied right now and she doesn't want to add to that hate train, but she kind of does. Megan says, I too share similar negative stories that the entire world does. I feel bad because we're turning a point where there's bullying happening to J-Lo. She just is a deeply unpleasant person. She had the the biggest entourage I've ever seen when she was on The View. More than Kim Kardashian and the president. I just don't really understand why it was needed. Megan says, I was a host at The View. She was not nice. You don't always have to be so nice, but it was surprising that people like Kim Kardashian couldn't be more delightful. When you're coming on a show for a 10 minute segment, just fake it till you make it for 10 effing minutes. But at this point, it's getting harder to find somebody who had a positive experience meeting JLo. I even have a cousin who has a coworker who worked with JLo saying, that she Jennifer Lopez uh it seems like she can't sell her tour she's been canceling dates struggling to sell tickets so now she is rebranding the entire tour she's changing it all to this is me live the greatest hits which strikes me as a very Taylor Swifty thing she's trying to do Taylor Swift went wild, crazy popular with the Eras tour. Right. And now J-Lo's saying, I want a piece of that because me now is not working. I think Jennifer Lopez wanted to get like, hey, I'm still popular too. And she's not so much. It's Think about how much we heard about that album in that documentary. And we talked about it and her and Ben. The album debuted at 38 and then fell off the chart completely the next week. I can't think of a song from it. I can't, I can't no, remember was, ever hearing it. There was so much hype and effort and promo going into that, and it just didn't click. Beyonce isn't that, though, is she? Beyonce is still very relevant. I think that's another thing. You know, you see Beyonce and Taylor and Jennifer Lopez. Is this woman is stressing me out. J-Lo, what are you doing, girl? You guys have to understand, I was her demographic, okay? When she was at the height of her fame, I was in my early 20s, and you could not tell me anything. Whatever this woman was serving, we were just eating it up, okay? And now with Diddy and Bad Boy, it's like, uh-oh, the end of an era. So when you see the tide is changing, it's time for you to go in another direction. Jennifer Lopez's demographic, we grew up. It's been 20 plus years. So whatever you were doing back then, it's not going to work again for us. And if you're trying to attract a new demographic, you've got to do it a different way. Then you release This Is Me Now, and you thought this was going to be a comeback, okay? But it's not that good. The music is terrible. Your Amazon situation was kind of a wreck. You announce a tour. Ticket sales are terrible. You have to cancel dates. Your album debuted on the Billboard charts at number 38. I honestly didn't believe this when I saw this. I had to actually go to his page and be like, no, he didn't post this. Diddy didn't post this. I think all of J-Lo's exes are going to come out of the woodwork. They're like, oh, she's a free woman. Oh, she's willing to go out 